Welcome back to part 4 of the Zombie Containment Chamber Control Panel build. To recap, I'm building a companion prop, a control panel, that will work with the Zombie Containment Chamber to create more of an interactive experience and tell more of a story than just the chamber itself. This episode will focus on the system power panel that I've modified slightly, but before we get started I wanted to go over what inspired this and my creative process. It all started with a switch, um, but I've got tons of different LED lights and switches that I've collected over the years. Um, and one day I was on eBay and I actually came across this switch here. This is an Allen Bradley switch. Now these things brand new go for like a hundred bucks. So um, what I always do is I try to look on eBay as often as I can just for interesting uh, parts that would be fun to use in a Halloween prop. And I like old vintage things of pretty much anything. But I saw this and I kind of got inspired because I thought, well, that would be kind of cool for my zombie containment chamber. And then I thought, well, why don't I build an entire control panel to interact with the entire chamber? So these are cool. The components kind of screw off like that. You can unscrew the lens there and see um, the bulb. This is an aftermarket bulb that I put in. I had tried two or three different bulbs. Some of them weren't bright enough. I'm not a fan of incandescent bulbs just because they tend to get hot even though this one is only 24 volts that powers the, vol the bulb um, and the switch itself is capable of, of uh, switching up to 600 volts I believe. Anyway, this is all going to be low voltage stuff but it's just going to look really cool and I like the, uh, the dimension of this that's really gonna stand out proud from the control panel. So I got a couple of these, I got a, a yellow one. These are all momentary switches. That means that when you push the button, it doesn't stay clicked. So you have to think of that when you're building your control panel on what exactly you want each switch to do. Um, then there's actual switches here. This is a two-stage switch so that the center is usually off and then you can control one thing with one side and then something else with the other. And again, these little Escachuans or collars um, unscrew. A couple of them I needed some replacement parts for. Those are really easy to find, but they are not cheap. So it's best to find an eBay auction um, that's about to end and just bid on one of these things. Um, if you, you can normally get something like this for around $10 if you're lucky. Then I had some rocker switches. This is an illuminated one. Uh, don't have this incorporated into my design currently, but um, I have so many goodies. I may build a couple of uh, offshoots of the control panel um, to make the whole thing more modular uh, where I can add on to it later if I want to. These are cool little switches. They're um, backlit. What the nice thing is you can take them apart and you can put a label on here. So I was thinking of um, using 10 of these for, and they're momentary switches, and this is what I'm gonna play the different sounds with. On the back, you can see a bunch of different terminals here. The two terminals are for the 12 volt power. That's to power the, the LED backlight. And then there's a common, a normally open, and a normally closed switch. And then I'll go into how that works later as I start putting the panels together. Um, these are panel lights. Um, you can find them at automotive supply stores uh, on eBay. You can find this stuff on Amazon. These lenses actually unscrew, and I was thinking I would make some um, labels for these as well. I got a new um, vinyl cutter that you just uh, print to like a printer. So I was going to make some custom labels for these. I wanted to do sort of a proof of concept and so I just uh, masked this off with some black electrical tape and I'm just going to use a 9 volt battery. These are 12 volts but you can see, I don't know what that is, it looks like a bow tie or something but um, that's the concept. I can I can make a vinyl mask and then print it and then remove whatever the label is going to be and then place the vinyl sticker onto that white piece and then screw that back on and you'll have kind of a cool symbol. I figured that would be much more interesting than just a bunch of green lights to show the status of each individual system. 
So in any way, when I'm getting inspiration, I look at things that I might have on hand, like these little bulbs. Some of the stuff you can buy at Radio Shack, some of it you can buy online again, like I said. Uh, I get a lot of cool lights from just automotive uh, supply places. And sometimes uh, if you have a local one near your home, you can just go uh, walk around it and, and look at all of the cool different uh, uh, panel lights they have. Sometimes they have cool LED strip lights uh, that um, I've used on the zombie containment chamber. These are two housings for LED. Um, the, these black plastic ones I bought uh, direct from China and I don't like them at all because if you were to mount your LEDs in here they would just be all cattywampus. You'd have to individually glue them in and there's just something not quite dimensionally correct on these these shrouds so I'm not really a fan of them they were really cheap though um, these are metal and got really good reviews in Amazon not as good as um, what Radio Shack used to sell but I can't find it and actually I'll show you I've, I've had a stash of these for years but Radio Shack used to sell these LED holders and these were the best I've ever used I just don't have enough of them for this particular project so I had to order more but I went on Radio Shack's website and I can't even find these anymore maybe they still have them in store I don't know if uh, you know otherwise leave a comment down below um, but these metal ones I found on Amazon and, and these are much um, better. I will have to glue the LEDs in, in there, but that's not an issue. This is an emergency stop button. It looks really cool when it's lit up. And then I don't know if I'm going to actually um, make it practical where it would turn everything off. I probably will have it shut something off, like maybe it'll shut off all the lights um, for a moment. Uh, and, and that's when, you know, I would come out or an actor would come out dressed as the zombie to scare everybody. Still kind of uh, figuring that out but that'll be fun to use. So some more goodies here. These are cool. These are um, angel eyes is what they call them. They make uh, both momentary and non-momentary switches. They look really cool when they're lit up. And shop around for these. Sometimes you can get them for about four or five dollars each. Um, and sometimes they're about ten dollars each. So you, um, a little pricey but they're really well made and I think it, they're gonna um, add some really cool effect to that control panel. This is just an automotive indicator light um, that I found. I've looked at a lot of these um, and normally what I do is when I buy these, I hook everything up to my DC power supply, turn the lights off so you can actually see what this is gonna look like inside your haunted house or your haunted garage or wherever you're gonna have your prop displayed. Sometimes the lights look a little too cheap for me. Um, I like really true, good colors. Um, if you're using something like an amber light, I guess um, you know an old incandescent look is just fine. Matter of fact, I, I love the warmth of actual incandescent lights over cool LED lights, but when you're talking colored indicator lights. I like true reds and two, true blues, true greens. I've purchased some, like this is a, a panel light that I purchased from China. It's 12 volts and it looks like it's really well made, but when I, when I hook it up to the DC power supply, the color of the LED is just awful. I would never use this. So now I have like five of these and I mean, I'm sure I'll use it for something eventually, but not for this prop. I want this prop to be um, a showstopper. I want it to have the wow effect. So these are some clear LEDs. One, one thing I consider is, you know, what do I want diffused LEDs or clear lenses? Um, I'm going to use a combination of clear lenses and the diffused LEDs. I like the diffused LEDs because they don't put off a lot of light. They're really bright, but they're not putting off light that would shine across the room. Um, because this control panel has so many lights, if you have really intense LEDs, it's just going to be overwhelming and you're going to, you, you want a certain amount of darkness in your haunted house, of course. So, um, and, that, and that's another reason to test your voltages and determine um, what's going to give you the best look for where the prop's going to be displayed. So, they sell these in a bunch of different colors. Super, super dirt cheap. Um, um, they don't have resistors, so it's going to be a lot of soldering, but that's all right. Um, th the nice thing about these is you can buy them in different voltages. They sell them in um, 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts, tw up to 12 volts, or even 24 volts. 
and the resistors are already soldered in which makes it really easy so all you have to do is hook up the wires. I do not recommend using a hole saw with acrylic. It has a tendency to want to skip off, so I found it easier to use a step bit and just drilled my holes so that I can get my router with my flush trimming bit in there to remove the material, and that, uh, that worked really good. But after I got all done, I kind of realized that the openings were not as big as I needed them, so I had to use a larger router to remove a little bit more material. Then I masked off where I wanted my lines to be. I used an automotive gray primer and then I used some Rust-Oleum black textured spray paint and I was really pleased with how the finish came out. Then it was time to cut the individual six metal panels and I just used that same blade that I used to cut the acrylic sheet. It's a uh, acrylic and non-ferrous metal cutting blade. It's got 80 teeth and I'm just using that on my table saw to cut those uh, aluminum sheets. Next I'm just using my mini dedicated sanding center to round off the corners of all of the plates. Then I made a little jig for my drill press so that I could slide each plate in, drill the hole and then quickly turn it and repeat. So I had a total of 24 holes to drill and this makes everything go very quickly. For the rest of the holes and the openings in the aluminum sheet, I just used a combination of my drill press with either a step bit or a drill bit, and then also a jigsaw with a bimetal cutting blade to cut out the rest of the openings, and I cleaned up all of the edges with some sandpaper or file. After I had all my openings cut out, I sanded the entire sheet with just some 150 grit sandpaper and an orbital sander, and that gave me a nice textured finish. Then I wanted to try making labels with my new Silhouette Portrait vinyl cutter. So you can see here I've printed my labels and I'm just using some tweezers and an X-Acto knife to carefully remove the exterior of the vinyl exposing the letters. I was actually pleasantly surprised with how easy it was to work with this stuff. I was expecting a lot of problems and just wasn't sure about the whole label thing, but they came out pretty good. Now I'm just using some transfer tape to stick down on my labels and then slowly and carefully remove those labels. I've sped this up for time. And then I've uh, created a guideline with just some uh, quarter inch masking tape and then I'm going to come in with that transfer tape, set it, center everything as best I can, set it down, and then um, use your finger to uh, rub those labels in really, really good, and then you remove the, uh, the tape the same way with kind of a peeling fashion. After I was satisfied with the labels, I sprayed the entire panel with some Rust-Oleum Flat Matte Clear General Purpose Spray. That small wooden box on the back of the panel actually has a bunch of green LEDs inside. I originally was planning to use an actual seven segment display, but I wanted to have a letter next to each display, so A for amps and V for volts. So I ended up just making a little wooden box, lined it with some foil tape. Then I cut a small plate out of that uh, translucent acrylic and used my portrait silhouette cutter to cut out some vinyl letters using an LED font and then I spray painted the plate and then removed the letters. After I had all of the components installed, it was just a matter of hooking up quite a few wires and lots of soldering. For the components with actual wire terminals, I do like to tin all of my wires. This prevents the strands from fraying out and causing a short circuit. This is kind of tedious, but it's somewhat therapeutic. It requires a lot of focus, and I really want to take my time here and do a good job. I'm soldering all of my wire joints, and I'm also protecting each exposed wire and solder joint with some heat shrink tubing. Next, it was time to install the panel. The first thing I'm doing is using a Forstner bit to just get through that top layer of that acrylic sheet. If I don't use a Forstner bit and I try to use a regular um, drill bit or a step bit, I could chip out the acrylic sheet or even worse, crack it. The Forstner bit works really, really well to remove the material without any chip out. 
Now I've switched to a smaller bit. I didn't have this size and a Forstner bit, so I'm using a brad point bit that's marked with green tape. That shows me how deep I need to drill the hole. And then I'm just uh, installing some threaded wood inserts. Now I did cut a countersink into the drill hole, but you can see that it wasn't quite deep enough because this machine screw is left a little proud, but I actually kind of liked how it looks, so I just left it like that for now. So here is the first finished panel, and you can see that there's a red lamp that's on. That's a 120 volt panel light, and that just tells me that the system has power, or the control panel has power going into it. And to turn on power to the unit, I am just using a two-position keyed Allen Bradley selector switch, another eBay find. Once the main power is turned on, notice that all of the angel eyes come on, as well as that LED perimeter lights around each panel. And there's also a green 120 volt panel light that comes on. Now, the bottom angel eyes are actual switches. They're all 12 volt, those are all green. When those buttons are pushed, it will activate the symbol light and it will also turn on the corresponding panel. The angel eye switches above the on-off switches are momentary switches and they're lit up in the same color as the corresponding symbol light above them. When those buttons are pushed one at a time, they're momentary switches that will play a sound that will start a boot up sequence for each individual panel. You can see at the bottom right of the panel and above the middle bottom panel there's a little bit of green showing through that black paint and uh, that's just uh, some scuffs that happened during the install and I'll have to go back and touch that up, not a big deal. So that concludes the first panel build of the Zombie Containment Chambers control panel project. If you like what you've seen so far, please hit that like button. That lets me know that you want me to make more of these videos and keep posting them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Only two weeks to go until Halloween, so I'm going to be working at a pretty fast pace here to get the, the other five panels built. But if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.